Hey, on Nate D again, and would you believe I still get nervous before recording these and to the point where I consider whether or not I should. But again, that is the entire point. But now that that's out of the way, uh, I do want to start this one off with a message to CBS. Guys, if you aren't going to play nice and share your shows with the other streaming services, please make sure that yours works. I missed a good chunk of the tail end of this episode. Granted, I was able to figure out part of it because of what took place afterwards. So... But yeah, your your service kept flipping out, and it was really frustrating because I really love this show and I want to watch it and I want to support it, but you are making it difficult. And also, if you're going to call your service All Access, why don't I have all access to your show? There are entire seasons of Big Bang Theory I haven't seen yet, and I still can't see them because you don't have them on your service, but thanks for having 700 episodes of whatever soap opera you have. <sighs> anyway, overall good episode. Um, I was originally going to start off going on a, like a mini rant about how this was the Martian Manhunter show and I don't want to watch Martian Manhunter. But as I was getting ready to record this, I realized if there was an episode of Flash or Agents of the Shield or any of the other superhero shows I watch or really any of the shows I watch that focused on one of the secondary characters, I'd be okay with it. I would love to see an episode that focuses on Cisco, uh, an episode of Flash that focuses on Cisco, or let's say an episode of Castle that focuses on Ryan and SBD Zito. So, you know, maybe I was a little perturbed at first, and but I'm over. And I also realized that wasn't fair because... I mean, Kara was still there. I would say she was still primarily the focus. She was the, um... You know, she was the catalyst for the B story. So, you know, that was... Again... Cast is great, blah, 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 blah. Anyway. And I also, I mean, another reason I can't get too bad from focusing on Martian Manhunter, because David Hardwood is amazing in this role. I've only ever know I only knew him as a bad guy in an episode of Doctor Who. So yeah, I knew he was good, but he's awesome. <laughs> you know. That um official in the spoiler territory here, when that scene where he's talking about how he's not gonna take it anymore, he's gonna shed the skin and you know, basically went on full rage mode. I was like I just crapped myself just about. That that was really terrifying. Well, I was glad he's not a bad guy in this. And then the, um, the White Martians. I'm actually kind of glad they brought those in. It'll be, um... I hope they come back to it. Maybe not while the Kryptonian business is going on, but... I don't know, that's one of those aspects of the DC Universe. You, you ever really like something but not look further into it than what you know? Because I like the idea of the White Martians. I think, I don't know why, I just, I like the idea of the counterparts, and, you know, and I'm a big fan of Miss Martian, is a, another DC character who, you know, she, she claims to be John Jones's niece, but really she's a white Martian seeking redemption. Again, sucker for a good redemption story. So, yeah, I just, I, I'm not the expert on the concept. I've read one story, and everything else I know about it is seen through media, like the Justice League cartoon, but I enjoy it when it comes up. So, kudos. And it's good to see the show return to the whole hunt for aliens aspect. Because I was honestly surprised. I mean, the pilot sets up that she's going to be hunting the prisoners from this Fort Roz. And we've had two non-Kryptonians. And again, I expect that to be focused. Because that's um they have a similar intro, you know, for as far as the rest of the world is concerned. I'm on flat... It has a similar intro with Flash. It's almost beat for beat, which, again, they have the exam executive producer. It makes sense. I'm not saying that as a complaint so much, but the first season of Flash is set up as not only he's got to have superpowers and he's going to be saving people, but he's going to be looking for other metahumans, and that is primarily the focus of the first season, at least the first half of the first season. So, you know, 
the, all that talk about the pilot and the pilot about Fort Roz and she's going to help them hunt aliens. And in the introductions, I help my sister hunt down alien threats. That exactly hasn't come up a lot. So, and again, I, I don't mind necessarily. I mean, I only just realized this like a couple of weeks ago. So, yeah, again, really nice to return to the alien aspect, even if the White Martians aren't, you know, Fort Roz. I really like the actress, and I really... I'm going to have to look up... The, I like the actress they got to play the senator slash White Martian in her human form. And I'm going to have to look her up, because I know I've seen her in something else, but I could not tell you what. Um... Really like the uh, setup for the next episode where we're going to get Bizarro or Bizarra. And you know, I'm trying. I'm not going to talk about that now because you know there's a whole episode for it. But I have a feeling I already have a issue with it. But overall, I'm looking. Uh, there is one. I guess one negative for this episode would be that you know the CBS versus Andrew Kingsburg. I think CBS won out on this one a little more. This one definitely seemed to focus more on the hour-long drama stuff with Cat Grant and her son. And uh, while um, John Jones is technically an alien and everything, a lot of his angst, you know, it could have just as easily been like a soldier returning from Afghanistan or something. So, it's just... And I can't, again, I'm not necessarily mad because it was very well done, very well written, very well acted, you know, take a shot. But again, I just, this is a superhero show. If I had to choose between the two, I want to focus more on the superheroics. I'm also disappointed that we didn't get much of a follow up with the aftermath of what happened with Wynn last week. And don't get me wrong, I understand why it made perfect sense. But, you know, as I mentioned in my last vlog, I was really, really invested in that particular story, so I, I want to see where it goes. But again, you know, how they did it makes perfect sense. And um, Kara talking about how she hates space and time, I really wish they had found a way to work some Doctor Who reference into there. Uh, and again, you know, since I mentioned last week, it, this that episode spoke to me because of my personal issues such as depression. I love this take on Supergirl because her speech about the hole in your heart and you get up and you survive. She could have been talking to me. Again, I don't I don't want to focus too much on this because I want these to be positive overall, but I'm just going to say I've had some really dark days, and we're just going to leave it at that. So, yes, I loved it for that. I, again, they could have, the rest of the season could be absolute crap from this point on. And I'm still going to love this show, if nothing else, for these moments. It, they're just so well done and perfect. And, you know, when Kara hugs John at the end. Uh, that was just... That was really sweet. I really liked it. Kara going on a date seems odd to me. Because she's still dealing with her feelings for James. And, by the way, I love the return of the Signal Watch. And then the fallout with Wynn... Maybe because it seems maybe it seems odd to me that because I'm I'm rooting for Win I don't normally ship but I I really want Win to get the girl but it seems odd like I'm going through a lot right now maybe I shouldn't be jumping into a date but maybe that's because I'm having issues there too <laughs> I'm I'm not trying to turn these into a confessional guys I, I swear I'm not. But I get why they did it, because the guy they got to play um, Cat's son is Melissa's real-life husband, so you know, I get it. And yeah, they have good chemistry. I think 
maybe part of the reason I don't like it is, you know, she's obviously becoming one of my celebrity crushes, and I don't, you know, I'm already pissed she's married. Because, <laughs> you know, I totally had a shot. Ugh. Okay, I think that about covers everything. Maybe I'll do, like, a supplement to this one when I go back and rewatch the episode to see what I missed. I mean, like I said, part of it was easy enough to figure out, and I have a good idea what the other part is. But, again, again CBS. I mean, I'm, I'm trying not to be too mad because your service is much cheaper than all the other ones. And technically my roommate's paying it, but... Uh, it's just... It seems counterintuitive. If you're going to be greedy, if you want... This is, these are our shows. If people want to watch them, they're going to pay us. You need to make it possible to do that. I, again, I was really looking forward to being able to finally catch up on Big Bang Theory, only to find out you have the current season and nothing else. I, I don't get it. You have all of Star Trek. You have... Anyway, that, I guess that's another rant for another time. CBS, please do better. I, I love most of my... Sh I think most of the shows I watch are on you now. So I want to support you, but make it feasible to do so, please. Anyway, overall, really good episode. David Hardwood knocked it out of the park, though I do hope we stop focusing on Martian Manhunter so much and get back to, you know, being Supergirl. Uh, so... All right, see you guys next week, and maybe I'll see you on one of these supplemental videos I keep talking about. Because, you know, I totally have time for all these projects I keep coming up with. Anyway, uh, take care and good night.